For number 2, we have to write an equation for the given ellipse. To start off, we need to find the center, which is pretty easy in this case. You could take the average of corresponding points, like this one and this one, like left and right, bottom, top. Or if it's drawn well, you can kind of just look in the middle and see that that's at 2, 0. So if that's my center, I also need values for A and B corresponding for the major and minor axes. Well, the longer side is going to be the major axis. So that's going to be like here and here. The shorter one would be the minor axis. So this long length is 4, just like this one is 4. And all I did is look to go from 2, 0 to 4, you have to move 4 units. Similarly, to go from 2, 0 to 5, 0, you have to move 3 units. So I have to go 3 over each way. So that means B is equal to 4. Actually, B, B is equal to 3. A is equal to 4, because A has to be the bigger one. And the center, I already know, is 2, 0. So now let's write this out. So x minus the center x value, which is 2, squared over something. We'll figure it out. And then we've got y minus the center y value, which is just 0, so that's y squared, over something, has to equal 1. So now we have to decide where the a and b go. Well, the longer side here is vertical. The major axis is vertical. That means y has the major number of 4 squared. So here's my 3 squared. And that's the solution. For number 3, we're given two endpoints of the major axis and two foci. We can start by finding the center, and all we have to do for that is take the average of any two of these. We could, I mean, we could pick the two major axis ones, or the two foci. So I'll just look at the two foci, for example. If I average those, I get 2, comma, 3. And I can also use these numbers to determine my A value. I should be able to go for my center, and add a to get one number, subtract a to get the other. And that means a must be 3. 2 plus 3 gives me 5, and similarly, 2 minus 3 gives me negative 1. But now I have to find what b is, and they don't tell me anything about the minor axis. However, they do tell me the foci. And we know that the foci have to do with plus or minus c. And c is the square root of a squared minus b squared. So to find c, I have to go from the center, and I add something to get to one foci, and add something to get to the other. This means c must be equal to 2, because 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 minus 2 is 0, and that's how I can get these x-coordinates. So now here I have 2 is equal to the square root. We already know what a is, it's 3. So 3 squared is 9 minus b squared. I can square both sides, and finally I can move some things around, and I get that b squared is equal to 5. Now I have values for A, B, and the center, so I can write out the equation. So X minus the center X value of 2 squared, and that's going to be over something, and we've got Y minus the center Y value, which is 3 squared, also going to be over something, is equal to 1. And now we have to figure out which is which. Well, up here, the major axis only changes with x's. The y stays the same. y is always 3. That means the major axis goes along the x-axis. 
So x is where my a belongs. So here's my 3 squared. And for y's, I have to have b squared. We already know b squared is 5, so I'm just going to put 5. And that is the answer.